Hey everybody. Today I am excited to bring you another update to the Zoya Librarian app. Uh, this update has been a long time coming, so I apologize for that, but there are a lot of useful features and uh, bug fixes that I'll be going through. So hopefully that doesn't take too long because it's meant to be a supplement video. Uh, you can see the, the overall initial release video as well as the supplemental 1.1 update also on my channel um, and there's change logs included in, in the release and all that good stuff and you can check out the uh, the code on github if you uh, care to do that otherwise uh, this video will just serve to focus on the the updates that have been made um, so installation is a little simpler even simpler this time as so i have the bundles in the release file um, and you can check out the versions um, in there. One thing I'll say right off the bat is I don't know if this works on Monterey Max. I don't have a Monterey Mac to test. Um, so if it doesn't, then I'll have to address that. But I know it works on at least Big Sur um, in terms of like feature support because I'm running Catalina still on my uh, MacBook Pro. And then for Windows, um, I compiled on Windows 10 and then I had another uh, developer confirm that it worked on Windows 11. But again, I don't have that, so I can't personally test, but we can work together to try to fix bugs. And then the Ubuntu version, um, it's still the same version I've been using. I think it's 2004. Um, I might update that eventually, but um, yeah, for you Linux users, I hope that that's helpful at least. All right. Uh, so, as usual, we'll sort of go over the different uh, changes for each tab uh, in succession. Again, you can check out the change logs on GitHub or in the release files. Um, so, the first big thing is maybe minor, um, but it was something that I didn't expect to be able to do, but there was an update to the Patch Towards API that we use, um, where before it didn't let you search by um, author, and we all know our favorite Zoya author. Um, so now you can search for author names and get um, their patch lists um, in there, which is useful. Um, there's also new sorting, uh, so there's a request to add sorting by tags and categories, so that is now an option um, or a shortcut. If we go into the sort menu, there's category, tag, low to high. Um, so the way that this works is categories um, can be any number of, I think it's seven. Uh, so we use the same categories as are, as are on the patch storage site. Um, so these could be a list of any seven. Um, so if you sort by category, it's going to obviously narrow down by composition first. But if you search at that point, then it's going to narrow down to just the category that you want because the search works on categories and tags too. You know, it can also sort by tag. Uh, this works the same way. So there's a bunch of tags. Um, it's going to take the first one as sort of the, the main index, but if we search on Moog, then we can get all the Moog-esque patches um, that way. Uh, so just a handy little feature to help organize um, your downloads as well as your um, your own local storage and the folder view. Uh, so the, now the sorting works on every single tab, um, except for SD card because the, it's a different sort of um, file system. So we'll go back to the default to show the newest ones first. Um, so that's sorting. Um, there were some um, unexpected issues with the with the API. We recently hit 1,000 patches, which is very exciting, um, but that caused a bug on our side. Um, so if you are using 1.1 one, one, one or below, it'll only show the most recent 100 patches. Um, now it shows all of them, all 1,000 and plus, all the way back to the factory patches. Uh, so that's helpful. Uh, there's also an issue um, uh, where users couldn't connect, um, even though they're connected to the internet. So that has been resolved, and the error message has been 
slightly changed because um, it's actually an error with the API. It's not an error with your internet connection. Um, so we've sort of resolved that. Um, and also, if you do encounter that in the future, that will there will be a traceback um, in the pop-up message that you can send to us in the, in the bug report, and we can further dive in. Uh, but it should be resolved as of now. Uh, there's also a minor issue with the um, um, with one of the libraries we used on, on Windows machines that was resolved for scraping uh, patch storage to grab the patch lists. All right, so that's um, most of the patch storage tab. There is also, again, just a reminder, there is the documentation uh, in the help toolbar that shows um, a bunch of useful files that have been up updated, um, tips and tricks, uh, user manual, uh, frequently asked questions, that kind of stuff. Um, I think it's a useful documentation for when you don't necessarily want to go, you know, to, to you know, Chrome or Firefox or, or something. Um, and then it's a minor point um, that I don't remember if I mentioned in 1.1, but I'll mention it here. Um, there's also been support to add a, uh, this hyperlink up here. This works in the patch storage and local storage tabs. Um, this will bring you to the Web, the patch storage website where the patch is hosted. Um, easy feature enough to add and add some functionality, which is nice. I think that pretty much does it with the patch storage tab. Um, another sort of UI thing, um, we added a navigate to local backend um, file menu uh, slash shortcut, and this will open up. Uh, there were some requests for users to see where the files um, are being stored because there's no sort of like cloud server or anything. This is all stored on your local machine. You know, when the app installs, it it loads files onto your machine, and when you import the patches, they're they're you know they're all local. Uh, so some users are curious where they go. Um, so I just made it a little simpler. It just saves a step of me telling them where it is on their system. Um, so if you look on that, it'll open up a little browser. Um, um, the patches are in a very specific format, so I urge you to not change anything about this directory. Otherwise, it will break things in the app. And also, just to note, these, this open button isn't going to do anything. Um, this just brings up the directory. It's not actually selecting a path or anything. It's just for you to see it. Um, so you see all the, the different patch folders and their different files. Um, different versions, um, the main JSON files, the the folders tab, that kind of thing. Um, so this just shows your local backend. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll stress, do not change anything about this. Uh, otherwise, it will break things. Don't add a new file. Um, at most, you can just sort of see where it is. And we can debug issues if things go wrong here. It's just an easy way to, to view the backend and be able to see where it is. All right, we'll move on to local storage, which is probably the, is the biggest feature uh, that has been worked on. Uh, so moving to local storage, it's, again, similar things to what we've seen. Um, again, the tag categories um, sorting works here. Um, the searching for author works here, as it did in 1.1. Um, the rating works here. Um, there's been some optimizations for, like, when you move between tabs, um, if you downloaded a patch, sometimes it wouldn't immediately populate until you uh, reset the table. But now when you move between tabs, um, it will reload. So you automatically get to see the new patches that you imported or deleted or, or, or whatnot. Just a little convenience thing. Um, the ratings also work the same way. Um, patch notes are the same. This visualizer is exactly the same. Um, I think I, the only thing I added was when you reach the last page, it won't let you page up anymore just to save you from having to page down, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, but the biggest feature is the expand view. Um, so this allows you to see the full routing of a patch. Um, it's sort of a node graph display. So I'll click expand. Um, so right now the window's a little tiny, so we can make it a little bigger. All right, so this is a pretty complicated patch. This is one of Christopher's. Um, it's a modal synthesizer patch. Uh, so we can like zoom in. You can see certain connections. You can see 
uh, you know, there's ADSR going into um, a multiplier. There's some knob controls going to different places. You can see all these different paths and, and stuff like that. Um, so there's a, a sort of a set of ways to sort of navigate in here. Um, the first thing that I'll suggest, um, or at least I'll mention, is if you hit F, that'll reset the zoom to whatever you've selected. Um, you can select, let's say I want to look at this sort of block here, you can zoom to that selection uh, again with the, the F key. And then if you want to reset, you just click out, press F again. Um, so again, this is just to show sort of like the expanded routing uh, of a patch and it's sort of cool to see in, in a graphical representation. Um, there's two different ways to sort of organize it. Um, the, the default way is upstream, where the leftmost column are um, modules that do not have any input incoming connections. It's just outgoing connections. And then the right side is things that don't have any outputs. Right, so you're always gonna start with an audio input and end with an audio output for an audio patch. And then for a CV patch, it's just gonna be, you know, whatever the originating CV is until it doesn't go out anymore. Uh, there's also a sort of flipped view of that, which may be useful to see. Um, and I've been navigating between those using the L, and Command L or Control L um, um, keys. And you can see, I'll, I'll, I'll link to um, sort of where that all is, but there's also a, uh, um, and this, this is documented in the manual too. You can see this, this auto layout is done with these two hotkeys. Um, so there's a number of, of different cool things you could do with this. You can um, save this view to, you know, to see offline. Um, you can make changes, you can make different connections. Uh, so this is going to be supported in the future for the eventual editing and creation tools um, that are still being worked on, but are not, not quite done. Um, so yeah, it's a cool feature. Um, something that I will note is that because of, so Zoe is very open. You're allowed to make connections for things that may not be natural or may not be something that is easily represented in a uh, graphical representation. Um, so this will not work on every single patch, um, unfortunately, and that is due to um, what I have basically figured out to be feedback loops. Feedback loops sort of screw up the algorithmic way of representing a patch. So like something like Dimension Z, um, there's going to be a pop-up menu. If it does encounter that issue, it will tell you that the auto layout failed um, and then it will just present you with sort of this blob of patches. Um, so that is one known issue that is being worked on and will be updated for version 1.3. Um, at this point in development, I, I felt that it wasn't, it didn't make sense to hold back the release uh, based on this because I, I didn't really know how to address the problem, uh, but it will be continually worked on. But it, it does work on most of the patches that I tried um, as we go through. Um, just some cool examples. Uh, so like this is Velvet, um, a relatively simple patch, really. There's a bunch of controls on the left. There's some audio connections here. There's some oscillators and samples and holds and stuff like that. So it's a cool feature. Um, again, please let us know if there's any issues uh, outside of sort of that, that auto layout. Um, bug. It's 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 down to recursion. Recursion's a, a messy topic in, in programming in general. Um, so I hope hope that's hope you understand. Um, and I I think the feature is is really cool and, and unique enough to, to release um, as is. All right. Like I said, there's going to be uh, if you check the manual, there's there's more detail about how to sort of work with this. Um, but I think it's a really cool feature. Um, also, um, another note, uh, since the previous release, there was a new product released, um, the Zoya Euro Bureau, um, and in previous versions of the patch, it didn't have all of the modules, because uh, Zero Bureau has specific modules to that set. Um, so now we support 
Zebu patches, um, which is really cool. Um, right now, there is no way to display those sort of peripheral, always active pads, the audio inputs and CV, CV in and outs. Um, but for the most part, um, I mean, those are, since those are always present, I uh, didn't see the need to sort of represent them here. But the patch will load. Uh, it won't give you an error uh, for the patch visual visualization um, and the expander works just fine. Right, so most of these on the left are these sort of auto connections. Uh, there's some uh, that are just there. All right, so we see here uh, the first sort of main difference is since the Euro, the Euro Bureau audio outputs are split, you get these two different mono outputs that are acting as a, as a single stereo out. So there are some minor differences in how the patches are organized. So um, changes to the local backend are um, sort of supporting that. There were some um, minor bugs related to version histories. Um, so if we go into, uh, we can go to Abyss Water. So um, if I delete one of these, um, what would happen on the previous version is that it would, it would get stuck on one, one patch in the version, but the back button would be, get disabled because it doesn't think it's a version anymore because it's only one patch. So that bug was fixed. Um, there's also better organization of the versions in general. So, so before, um, how it would work is the versions were organized where each new one that was added would push the previous version up a number, so that would screw up the connection to the folders tab and how you organize your your folders that get uploaded. It would basically point to the wrong file. So I fixed that, so now that the, the first version will always stay the same version number and then new versions will, will increment uh, going forward. Uh, and the way that the auto sorting for this works is that it always will sort in reverse order. So that way the most recent patch is at the top of the list and the older patch is at the bottom. Um, which makes sense to me. Going on to the SD tab, um, not much has changed here. Still the same layout. Um, I'll just point out the uh, set export directory feature again. Um, so by default, um, it goes, it will create a new folder on your SD called uh, to Zoya but you can set the export directory to uh, any number of these. And that works with the local storage expert. Um, there were some bugs um, related to that that were resolved. Um, I won't go into too much detail. Um, and then folders. Um, so again, the sorting for tags and categories works here. Um, when you navigate to this tab, it will auto update any patches that are new or have been deleted. Um, as mentioned in the version history section, um, if you had folders uh, that were generated, they may not load fully correctly um, due to the way that the version numbers are now organized. But otherwise, the functionality is exactly the same um, as it has been um, for these patches uh, for this tab. So yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Still went longer than I, I wanted to, but um, that pretty much sums it up. Um, let's see, any other things in the options? Oh yeah, um, so there were some minor fixes for a Windows. Um, there's some issues with the, the alternating row toggle in uh, light mode and dark mode, so I fixed the, the CSS for that. Um, yeah. Uh, one minor other thing, um, also supported a way to import from your, um, the menu import now supports zip files. Um, so if you've got a, a, a versioned uh, set of patches, you can use that to import uh, a version as a single file versus using a directory. Just another convenience thing. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out uh, either here on GitHub in the uh, in the Discord, on Orzoia, um, and thanks for the support. Hope you enjoy it.